It is time for another live. Another demo with Dina. Hello, everybody. We are back. We are live. Happy times. Just trying to get you pulled up. What is going on with Facebook here? Here we go. So notice that I am back to a messy craft sheet just because <laughs> I really don't want to clean pouring medium off of the glass mat. Got your comments up now? Hello, everyone. It's Tuesday. <laughs> Glad that you are all joining me. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming back to my the hot mess that is a Dina Weekly demo. Oy vey. Sometimes even my own um, the scatteredness makes me laugh. It really does. The other day I was, I was cleaning my glasses and I had a little, I had the pox all over my glasses. I'm like, oh, of course I do. Of course I have the pox on my glasses. I mean, it's, it's everywhere else. Why wouldn't it be on my glasses? Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Okay, Kristen is here. Our, our um, spotlight store today is the lovely and wonderful Ephemera Paducah. Uh, Kristen Williams is the owner of that beautiful little shop. I've had the pleasure of teaching there a few, a couple of, how many times, Kristen? Twice? Two or three, maybe? And she is, she has such, Kristen has an amazing eye. And her shop is this lovely little jewel in this great brick building in uh, Paducah, Kentucky. So please make sure that you follow Kristen's social media accounts um, and follow, you know, sign up for newsletters and all that good stuff. Kristen is very good at making sure that you guys are kept informed about the happenings of the store and all kinds of good stuff. So Kristen, make sure you chime in, post all of your social links, post your, I think you said you were going to have some specials even. So wonderful, another wonderful store, another jewel. All these, all these stores are are little jewels in a, in just little treasures. They really are because they're few and far between. I think three times, Kristen. Yeah. So my com the com by the time I see your comment, by the way, it's a it's I think it's about thirty seconds or longer <laughs> after I actually speak. So just to keep that in mind, there's that kind of lag happening um, from my phone to when I when I get to see it on the on the screen. So, so glad to have Kristen. So everybody support our local store, Spotlight Store, Ephemera Paducah. Yay! Today we are going to talk a little bit about pouring. So this is not going to be like Pouring 101. If, you're inter if you've never poured before, I really encourage you to find um, the original video that I did. So when pouring came out, I I did a, it's a good 20, 25 minute long video about all, you know, all things pouring and in and, and, and introduction to the product and to pouring in general. I believe that it will be on Ranger's social media channels. And it, so it, I think it's on their YouTube. And then remember, if you go to rangerinc.com and then at the top, click on videos, then you can scroll down to like my brand. The glass mat's just underneath the craft sheet. Um, okay, does that make sense? So definitely go search out that, the original pouring video, um, because that's not what this demo is going to be. But pouring got really popular the last couple of years. I've been asking for a pouring medium for a while. And they finally, or actually they didn't, they finally did it. Steve from Ranger, um, the, the awesome chemist, would send me iterations and we managed to um, 
all thanks to Steve's hard work, get a really cool product made that kind of makes pouring um, easy and fun and it's always been fun, but it, it, anyway, so if you watch the regular pouring video, you'll, or if you're into pouring at all, you'll know that pouring often is done so that you make entire kind of loose, interesting paintings. Um, there are lots of interesting pouring artists out there. And, and the fun thing about pouring is the serendipitous nature of it. You get interesting cells. These little dots are called cells. You get cells and all kinds of, um, you know, uncontrollable interactions between your paints and things like that. And, you know, me being the person who loves organic, free deliciousness, it, 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 that's why I love, one of the reasons I love pouring is because you, you can't really predict it. You can't control it. You're, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit kind of thing. And I do teach a, a two hour um, kind of beginning pouring class where we go through the theory of it. And then we also, um, I show you how I, I'm, use a little bit of design and composition to to get the pores to, to to control them a tad um so my pouring medium um it, after it's dry it has a satin finish so that's why i'm able to write on that pouring medium with um with paint pens Okay, so my pouring medium is unique in that it, it does knock down to a satin finish because I needed it to be workable. I needed it to to be able to, to paint on it, paint on it more, to take to take other mediums. So mine does knock down to a workable finish. And the only thing that you need for pouring are let me just put these on down. Um, you need the pouring medium, you need this little stuff called cell creator. Um, Traditional pouring artists probably look down on my product <laughs> because they're doing all these cool things like they're heat. They're you're using a butane torch to heat the paint and create cells. They're using silicone and axle grease and all this stuff in their concoctions to get some really cool effects. Well, I'm a simple creature in the in in an art sense, and I really do not want to be using a butane torch. <laughs> in my studio. Could you imagine me with a butane torch in my hand? Like I did buy one once for a jewelry making class and it's still in the package. Um, because you know, I just don't think a butane torch <laughs> in my hands is it, Listen, if I can't handle ice resin, the one time I did something with ice resin, it, I got it in my hair for heaven's sake. I got it on my carpet. Anyway, so this is kind of pouring light in a way. So you, you got to have the pouring medium and the cell creator. You can get this little kit packaged together or they're available separately in a little bit bigger quantities. We also offer mixing cups and stir sticks. These are not disposable. This means that you just let the product dry in it and reuse it over and over and over. Okay, so you kind of need one pack of these and then never, um, you never need to buy them again. Just don't rinse them out because the pouring medium will stick to your pipes. So, you could wipe them out with a baby wipe or just let, let the stuff dry and then keep pouring over and over and over. Also in the program are these little fine tip, well they're not super fine tip, but pouring bottles that allow for a more precise application. And so I'll be using those today as well. So yesterday I was, um, it occurred to me, oh, I need some samples already dry to work on. So I did a few yesterday and this is my pouring medium. I put it in a plastic bag because I didn't use it all. And I will mix some more today as well. So that's why this plastic bag is here. I didn't want it to dry out. And this is my, this, so this is white already mixed up, pouring medium. This is magenta. This is cheddar. Now I decided yesterday to see if gloss spray um, played nicely with pouring medium. And I will say that answer is no. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't hurt the pouring medium, but because gloss spray is just so, so, so fluid, it it just didn't make for the best viscous pouring medium that I could have. So I don't, I recommend my acrylic um, paint and not necessarily gloss spray. Or if you use gloss spray, you just use a tiny bit. And then I did turquoise. And what happened with the turquoise is I could tell as I was playing with it earlier that I had um, made it too thick. And so the key for mixing your, 
your pouring medium with a little bit of paint. In general, it's four parts pouring medium to one part paint. Now that's a generality because I don't do much with measuring, right? So I'm gonna add a little more pouring medium to this one. It needs to feel like kind of like heavy cream, okay? If it, and notice that my this one is going to be too fluid because I added gloss, um, gloss spray to it instead of cheddar, and then I went back and added cheddar paint because it still was too fluid and all that good stuff, okay? And then the magenta lo looks like heavy cream, so that one's okay. I'm gonna mix a couple more colors. So the formula is about, you know, <laughs> about that much pouring medium. I don't know, whatever you want. And then one drop of cell creator. So the cell creator acts like a, okay, that's not the lid. Uh, the cell creator is kind of like a, I don't even know if surfactant is the, the right word, but it's it's kind of the little thing that cre helps create those cells. So one drop. The more cell creator you put in your mixture, the, the smaller your cells will be. So just, that's just a little trick there. And then I just, this, oop, <laughs> I, I got paint everywhere. And then I just kind of go, that works for me. So, you know, all, there are measurements on these cups. Do you think I measure? People, you know me better than that. So I'm gonna mix up some Sedona and some Fuchsia. So what I tend to do is I will put a little blob of pouring medium in there. I will go with paint, that's an official term. And then I will just spin it around and stir it and, and then I'll test the viscosity. And I'll just kind of look at it and think, does, will that pour? Okay, that one obviously needs a little more pouring medium. You're, you're going for that heavy cream consistency. Okay, heavy light. There we go, much better. The, the mistake that I've seen people make in class actually is they don't put enough acrylic paint in there. And what happens if you don't have enough paint in there is your pouring medium will look incredibly transparent. So you don't want it to be transparent. You do want it to look like the color that you're adding, but you don't necessarily, um, you know, you don't want to add so much paint that it becomes too thick to pour, okay? Because the viscosity is what it is what it's about. So then, like I said, in this one, I've got white. I'm going to mix one more bottle. Oh, here it is. Oh. And I'm going to put a dark color in it. La, 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 la. Oops. <laughs> oh, Dana Wakely. <sighs> Sometimes I'm amazed at my own ridiculousness. All right, so I'm putting night in there so I have a dark color. I'm sure, that looks good. And a dot of cell creator. I still have my prototype cell creator because you only use a dot at a time and I still have my original. This is my prototype cell creator. Oh, I just dropped it. Oh. I'm not going to go retrieve it. I went to grab it and then dropped it. Okay, so now I'm going to just shake up and mix up the bottle. In general, when I mix product for pouring, I use it all in, in the sitting. Um, a lot of people will, they'll get a metal um, tin or like a, ba like a disposable turkey <laughs> baker or uh, a box and have a pouring station because this stuff is is pretty um, permanent. <laughs> you can pour on glass, metal, you name it, you can pour on it. Um, my friend Sue from the UK, she, she made these really cool um, tea tins that she poured on and she gave me one. I'm so happy. So it'll stick to, it sticks to everything. All right. Do you, you um, Erica, you put cell creator in everything. So a drop of cell creator in all the colors. There's already cell creator in these other ones because I, I did mix these up yesterday. And in general, I only use one stir stick too. <laughs> I usually just stir it up, wipe it off, stir the next color, wipe it off, stir the next color, wipe it off. All right, so we all know that we can use these elements to make, or use the pouring stuffings to make um, complete poured pieces like I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, but I want you to think beyond that and realize as well that you can do, think of pouring as one of the layers on your artwork. And what you're going to end up with is we're going to end up with small amounts of pouring on 
paper on tags. You can do it in your journal. I would, for me, I, um, you can just do it with, uh, or I like to do it on loose paper so I can do a lot at one time. If you do it in your journal, then, um, you, you have to put the journal aside and wait for that to dry. So Tannis says, I've used Floetrol as a medium. Can you paint on top of it? I haven't used that, so I don't know about Floetrol, but you can definitely paint on top of this stuff, my stuff for sure. Um, all right, so these are the ones that I did yesterday. So I've got all of these ready to play with today. These were already dry, but let's make a few today. So the goal here is to not do the kind of, look at these skins, you guys. Um, not do these the kind of pouring, oh my gosh, look at that skin. Sorry, attention deficit, oh, squirrel's taking over. Not do the kind of pouring that creates a whole painting, but do the kind of pouring that is um, just an element or a layer. So instead of starting with paint and stencils as a, a layer for our mixed media piece, we start with a little bit of a pour um, to add visual interest. So again, we're not going for finished paintings here, we're going for layers. Your cat is watching, Oh, awesome. All right, and I, I opened a package of, of loose craft um, paper today, but you can, you, you, know, you can use anything. Now this contradicts my other pouring um, little rule, which is in general, I do not pour on anything that's not rigid because you'll notice, see how, see how these are really bendy? Because that pour is, is so fluid and then it's going to absorb into the paper and it will make your paper bending and, and warped and stuff like that. So if, if I'm making a completed poured painting, I pour on media board and then I pour on wood panels. Um, Tim makes these really awesome like um, press board shapes. Um, those are really cool and I anything rigid is really great for a, 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 a kind of a, an official poured painting. Paper's not the best for an official poured painting because of the way the paper absorbs the fluid and then warps the paper because your pour will move when you're not watching it even with a millimeter difference. Even with one little millimeter of change in that substrate your pour is going to move. It's going to it's gonna change. So anyway, all right. So let's just start with a little bit of background color. So now if I think, okay, self, I'm gonna just play and make myself backgrounds. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting the pouring medium on tags and on paper, um, not in massive quantities. Uh, we're doing this in small amounts. Um, otherwise, you'll end up dancing around a lot of pouring medium, which is not terrible. So, But what I do is I don't want to have tons of excess pouring medium everywhere. And so I put on Sedona and Magenta, and then I skimmed the surface. So just like you're skimming um, fat off the top of a soup or something, <laughs> you are going to take a... It can be a... You can be a palette knife. You can use a, um, a a piece of cardboard, for heaven's sake, whatever you want, to skim the surface so you're not scraping all the way down to the bottom of the paper. You're just skimming the surface. And what's happening is when, when those two colors or three colors or however many you're putting on there, when they start to agitate together is when that cell creator starts to happen and the cell creator will start to make cells okay but it that's that creation that cell creation process it doesn't happen without agitation okay so I'm I'm overlapping color and I am manipulating a little bit you don't want to stir it and stir it and stir it gummy you know goody gumdrops until it's all one color. We're just manipulating it enough to start creating a few cells and to create and to create some visual interest. Because this right here is a great opening layer, a beginning layer for a page, right? Or for anything that I want it to be, a book cover. I'm going to take some of the white pouring medium that, that I have in my little application bottle. Can you see how even little cells are starting to appear? 
in the white line. Isn't that cool? Do you want to snog that? I think you guys probably want to snog that, right? All right, so I like that one. I'm going to set that one aside. Next. <laughs> you know me. I'm going to um, move quick because that's how I roll. Uh, let's do a vertical one this time. La, 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 la. So remember, you start with a little bit. You're not pouring like you're pouring on a wood panel. And then you have to agitate. I'm not pressing all the way down on the substrate. I'm only skimming, skimming the surface. I'd love to pick up any any uh, spillage, flick it on, see what happens. Let's do some little black, or not black. I put marine, put marine in the in the bottle. I usually have night and white in the bottle, um, and I can't find them. Which, if you saw the studio right now, you would think a hoarder lived here. Okay. And then what, once you start playing, you're going to be like, oh, let's put some, let, oh, let's do, oh, and then you're down that creative wormhole, right? So notice that I have a few colors happening that I like. I mean, I like these, I like the colors together. And then I added a light, which I'm using white, and then I added a dark, and I'm using marine. So that's just kind of helping me, I mean, I, mean, I guess drawing in a way. I love that one though, you guys. I wanna snog that one. I think I need to snog it. Oh, look, that's cool. So I tapped it, and now my circles really aren't circular anymore, but they look cool. Love it. All right. Try again. And then, so, you know, play until you've used the pouring medium that you've created, that you've done. Or if you want to save it for another day, you can, put, you can pop the lid back on these bottles, and then they're fine. Um, if you want to save the pouring medium, just pop it in a Ziploc or something. I found too the gloss spray didn't it didn't really want to make cells um, as as uh, readily as the other as the heavy body paint which I which is interesting. And the the other not fun thing about this is you're just doing it on paper, right? So th at the worst, it's, it's a background you can cut up. And at the best, you're like, okay, now I put a stamped image on that or I draw on that and look at the cells I'm getting right there. Oh, look at the cells. <laughs> it, I just never cease to be amazed by the interactions that happen. I think I'm in love with that one now. I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows. All right, let's do a face. I found some white tags. That one already in my, I found some stuck in my box. So I've got a few, not a lot. I need to, Alan was gonna find out for me when uh, white tags were gonna come back. I need to ask him about that. Still waiting. So I'm going to take three colors next to each other. And manipulate them a bit. Oop, paint, there's something there. That's kind of fun, huh? I love, you wouldn't think the Sedona would go with magenta. Mm, it does though, doesn't it? It does. 
delicious. Remember, you can always go back and watch these. They're saved permanently on the Facebook page. see how that dries because it might keep spreading out it might look a little bit <laughs> a little bit mushed but hey I'm pro mush I'm good with that so I'm just gonna do I have two more pieces of craft you're getting the idea of this right I'm gonna I'm gonna just do two more pieces of craft and then I'm gonna set this aside and then I'm gonna grab the ones that are already dry and um, kind of show you how I would proceed to use use it. Ooh, hello, that is so much. I can tell you right now that is way, way too much pouring medium for this piece of paper. been very good at looking for comments so I will do that in just one second I'll hold that one up oh gosh that one's gonna really dry warped because I put so much pouring medium on it don't those little rivers look cool though? Very cool. This one has potential of sticking to my floor. <laughs> All right, last one. Um. <laughs> you guys following Kristen? Seeing if you can. Find her website, social media. She's got specials going. Kristen, keep posting about them even if you've posted already. Don't stop. Don't stop believing. Don't even have enough to flick. Oh, there we go. Just a tap. Let's flick some of this one. Shannon, can you blot the first pour onto another? Yeah, you can blot them. Um, it'll change it. But I'll show you that. So here's the one that I put a lot of pouring medium on. I really like it. I don't want to blot that one. I'll, I'll do another tap with that, like that. And you know, you guys ask questions like, can you do that? Of course you can. The answer is almost always yes. So um, that's part of that experimentation process. Um, you, don't, you don't need to wait for me to say yes or no. You need to just try it and see what happens. I'm gonna just overload. Overload the tag. And then if I want to blot some of that off, I certainly can. It will change what you've done, but not necessarily in a bad way, but it will change. So one of the things that I'll do when I'm doing a traditional pouring session and I've got lots of pouring medium stuck in the bottom of my, um, what do you call it, pouring area, what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll take these shapes and I will 
throw these shapes in the overpour. Can you repeat the mixing recipe? Uh -huh. um, it's ish, right? The mixing recipe is uh, four parts pouring medium to one part um, acrylic paint-ish, and then one drop of, what do you call it? One drop of a uh, cell creator-ish. But I mean, did I, was that really what I did? I don't know. <laughs> so, because you know me, I'm not a big one who's gonna really be caught up on exactness. But you, the, the chipboard shapes are wonderful to pour on. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. They're just fun. So usually at the end of a traditional pouring session, I will have scads of pouring medium in the bottom of, uh, of, of I, I usually do a cardboard box. Um, and so then I, look at that. So then I will uh, dip chipboard shapes in them or tags. Isn't that delicious? Don't you want to snog that? All right, I gotta put this somewhere where I will not ruin it. Where's my heart? Oh, I already put something on top of the heart. Duh. So you can definitely use your chipboard. I've had so much caffeine today, I'm shaking. <laughs> All right, let me set that there. I wonder how long till I um, knock that over. We shall see. All right, so when these are, when these are empty like this, just let them dry. And, um, or, or wipe them out with a baby wipe. Pinky swear that you will not put pouring medium down your pipes. Pinky swear. Well, unless you really wanna pay good money to a plumber. Pinky swear, right? All right, let me just figure out where I'm putting these <laughs> for now. Boy. Cause you know I'm gonna knock them over, right? So they need to be off the desk completely. Um, oh, Kristen's got tons of chipboard shapes, she said. I don't know if you have tons, but she said they just came in. Um, any other questions before I move? Can you make skins with pores? You absolutely can make skins. Yes, you can. It, it skins like a dream. You would put the skin on the craft sheet or something that will release it. And then, yes. Yes, yes. All right, put this here. Get the craft sheet out of the way. All right. The turquoise color is turquoise, Kim, and the wine color is fuchsia. And it's impossible for me to go back and um, recap if you're joining me late, but I appreciate you joining me at any point. Videos are still available on the Art of Dina Wakely Facebook page. Go to that page on your computer, and on the left, click on videos, and then you'll see all of the, all of the videos there. You can always watch them at any time, and then eventually I get my act together in the, in the next day or so, and I put them on, um, I put the videos on my YouTube channel, and then I do repost them on my blog as well. Okay? All right. I haven't cleaned it in a while, but I do clean it occasionally. Okay, so, oh, okay, sorry, Kim. Um, so now, oh, that one's still wet. So these are the ones I did yesterday, I, and I didn't have the dark color, which I'm missing, I think. But let's choose a couple to play with. I really like, this one's really speaking to me today for some reason. So Kristen's from Ephemera Paducah. 
she is the owner of wonderful uh, wonderful wonderful shop in, in Paducah Kentucky and she is posting her social media channels store website links all my pens are dead that one does not want to write for me oh no Ooh, uh, let's try wide if you white right through wait white uh, wet paint with paint pen you ruin it you think I would learn that lesson but the answer is no um, that you can even write on this with the food ball. It takes a while to dry, but you really can. Okay, so maybe a little bit of text. To make it pop. Cool beans. All right, so now I just get to draw on these. I can use stamped images, collage, all of the things that you know how to do for focal points are now fair game. The, the, the paint, the dried pour will have, it does have a different feel than paint without the pouring medium in it, but it's still all workable, which is important to me. When I say workable, meaning, you know, there's some, sometimes you'll use a medium or something and it's absolutely impossible to um, put anything on top of it. But it's pretty easy to put stuff on top of these. Remember, there is a uh, face basic face drawing free video we did at the very beginning of the early uh, demo days when I was back to demoing live. Uh, uh, Sue, you would adhere any skin with gel medium. So this is my yeah, this is my craft paper. It's the same paper that's in the journals. Um, what are you writing? I write whatever's in my head. Whatever's in my head. I have a, I actually have a video about the writing as well. There's a free video. So again, go to Dino, Art of Dina Wakely Facebook page or my YouTube channel, Dina Wakely, and find the video that I did on Isemic writing. And I give you a little bit of my philosophy of what I write, how I write like that, the importance of writing. Because these are workable, I can come back with acrylic paint. So yesterday I only left three brushes in the water. Don't you think that's progress? Instead of about 40 million of them? I believe this paint color is apricot. It's the below all pencil, my standard pencil.
purposely blurring my lines because I think it, I'm just in the mood to do that today. I kind of like the blurriness. It's interesting. Catch lights. I missed the original question, but a catch light will vary depending on your light source. So wherever you put it, just make sure it's in the same place on each in each eye. If you put it in um, different spots on each eye, so like the left side of one eye and then the right side of the other eye, your person will not look right. Okay, that was hilarious. That paint came out of the tube onto the pencil. <laughs> of course it did. Of course it did. A little bit of turquoise. Yay. So what's the number one paint color I can never find, you guys? Do you even know? Remember? It's always white. You can never find white. Uh, there, found white. <laughs> Goodness gracious, Dina. Kristen of Ephemera Paducah, our spotlight store today, she and Seth Apter also did a really interesting survey about classes post-COVID. I don't know if you guys caught that or if you had a chance to fill that out. It was really, that was very interesting. Really cool. So now I'm going back with my pencil and just reinforcing lines. The lines pop out a little bit. That is a really annoying catch light. Oh, so she says she and Seth are going to repeat that survey. That's so cool. Definitely check that out. Isn't that a great background though for you know really basic drawing? Let's do collage collective on this one. So or I could you I could find a stamped image. You guys all know that I like to pre-stamp everything, right? I just I'm not quite sure where my <laughs> I'm not 100% sure where my stamped images are so right now I'm kind of overtaken in this studio I like that I thought that would be nice as a collage Foundation. Oh, I like that too. Another aspect I can use for collage. Oopsie. Dropping my scissors. Shocker. Shocker. I kind of like her. Watch Collective just makes putting something together so easy. All right. So I've got this round circly duty doodad. I'm gonna glue it with ultra thick and my finger. La, 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 la. 
that's kind of big. And maybe it's going to take up too much because I don't want to cover up this whole white swirly durly. But I, you know, it is still a background after all, right? That works for me. So that what I'm doing is I'm using some collage elements to basically build a, 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 a foundation, a little foundation upon which my focal point will sit. I think I'm gonna make it smaller. Yes, that works for me. It's my little, so that could have been a stamped image. If you had images you wanted to put on there, I think that would be super cute. I think she needs pink cheeks to kind of match the pink in the background. Everybody, email Diane, told her you witnessed me doing a polka dot. <laughs> uh. Really those little pores, they, they become their, the port element becomes its own little background and I you know I like my white space so I'm not gonna necessarily fill it in though I'm not saying never say never with me right I always tell tell you something and then I'll demo something different and people will be like but you said this I'm like well yeah I meant that yesterday but today this is the deal I'm a Gemini you can't make me uh, you can't make pin me down really I'm gonna add this little phrase from a tissue collage. If you never make a mistake, you'll never make anything. That sounds familiar, right? Very carefully gluing this. <laughs> uh, today's a snorty day. I think we need black circles. So I'm putting a little black paint on the palette. I'm going to spray it with some water. Uh, I don't see my spray bottle, <laughs> so I'm going to just stir it up uh, to make it fluid with a wet brush. And then I'm going to use the lid of a gesso jar. Put, so basically, let's practice it. That's what it's going to look like. See that? So I basically am using the lid of the gesso jar. Now I want black splatter. Pox. Oops, sorry. I hit the camera. Sorry about that. And then I usually wipe this off. Put that back on the bottle or on the jar. I love the... Oop, I gave her the pox right on her eyeball. Oh, well. Just let that dry just like it is. Ooh, I gave her a big pox there. Let's just get rid of that. Very nice. Should have, I should have speckled it properly and not just flicked the lid on it. But you know, you know, as one does. And I think one more collage element would be really cool. So I'm looking for like lime green. So what I'll do is I'll open this collage. Let me just set this aside for a sec. So now I want, I know that I want, oh my gosh, that's perfect. So now that I know I want something lime, I, I shop the collage collective by color. And I'll be like, oh, there's some lime. Um, I found this piece though, already cut. And I'm going to get myself some little circles. So I fold it over so I don't have to cut a million circles. I just cut it once and then I end up with three circles. There we go. Let's see if I hit, only one of them is lime though. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, 
la, la. what is collage sorry that just that that what is collage collective lisa the collage collective is a product you can buy it is pre-printed pieces of paper um that are backgrounds and different elements that came right out of my journals so it's it's just paper for you to cut up and you're gonna cut it up and you're gonna use it as texture and color and pattern uh, in your in your work so it's kind of like a head start so instead of sitting down and making myself some green paper I was able to dig through the collage collective and find paper that was already the color that I needed so that I could get um, you know, another little element added. So there, the, there's the original Collage Collective, and then there's Volume Two. And Volume Two comes in two iterations. So we made them. We made a few less pages in the Collage Collective just to lower the price point. But so this is Collect Collective Two, Volume Two. There'll be a Collage Collective Two, Volume One, and there's a big fat. Um, well. Yeah, then there's a big fat original collage collective. So people buy these and they're afraid to cut them up. But, you know, I, it's one of my most used tools in the studio because, I'll, you know, most of the time I shop it for color. So I'll be like, oh, I need something red. Oh, I could use that. And then I tear it out and use it. All right. Journaling, what do you think? Food ball pen. Oh, that's another food ball. So look how fun that, that, that blob on her eye is really bugging me. I've got to get rid of it. So now she's got, now she's a coal miner. We're just going to fix that. I have a million ways to fix. I never redo. I just fix it. So that big blob was in the way, right? So I, not, I got rid of the blob and now I'm just painting over where the blob was with a little white paint. So now, because I'd rather have her have some patchy white paint on her face than dog poop. <laughs> All right, there we go. She's back to almost normal. All right, does, does that make sense for using these? You're just, you're gonna use these just like a background because they are a background, that's what they are draw, collage, cut into pieces. Oh, that's awesome. So Kristen says, when you email your order, say, don't poo poo Paducah, she'll add, she'll, she'll take 10, another 10% 10 off. That's hilarious, Kristen. Don't poo poo Paducah. I absolutely love that. I think it is hilarious. I also think using poured elements like this, it makes your pouring medium go further. It, it gives it another application beyond, you know, just dirty pours. And I mean, all, I, pouring is fun, but I mean, how many poured paintings <laughs> can you do before you're like, all right, now what do I do with this stuff? So I, I just think it's super fun to pour in smaller, with a smaller footprint to use for other, other things. All right, questions, my friends. Questions, concerns. Um, the black pen is the food day ball. I probably missed questions because I wasn't paying attention. So now is your time to ask questions. Will there be more tag bags available before your dive trip? I hope so. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Dina, are you super excited to dive again in Cosmo? I am excited. I cannot wait to be under the water. Cannot wait. So the name of Kristen's store is Ephemera Paducah. So can you cover something drawn in Stabilo with gel medium? No, you cannot. If you want um, your drawing done with a Stabilo pencil, if you want to set it so that you can work on top of it, you've got to spray it. 
okay? You have to use a uh, like workable fixative or something like that. If I brushed gel medium on top of that, I would smear it. So it's not possible. That's one of the downsides to that particular pencil. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Cosmo Trip is not full. I've had a 90% cancellation. Um, this is, Laura, yes, this is the craft um, paper. It's the same craft paper in the journal, but you can also buy it in loose packets. Remember that Kristen will, I assume, Kristen, so correct me if I'm incorrect, um, she'll order for you too. Hi from Perth. Oh, it's early there, isn't it? Are you coming to Australia? I hope so. You know you can't get rid of me. I would love to come back to Australia. I would love it, love it, love it. These are fun. Now I just want to play on all my backgrounds all day. And I just might. Except I keep promising people things and then never, <laughs> never delivering. I have too many irons in the fire, you guys. Cosmel trip is in two weeks. All right, look at this. This is, it's still wet, but look how cool that's drying. Isn't that cool? Look, I'm doing my Muppet voice. When my voice goes up like that, you know I'm excited. I'm like, look how cool. I understand the cancellations. I mean, especially if you're in a risk group. Um, yeah. Um, yes, you can pour over collage. You can pour over anything. It's, it literally will stick to anything. You can pour on glass and it will stick forever. So, yes. I'm in love with this one. I honestly don't know. This might be a painting. <laughs> I might, that one might be done. See, they, they really do start changing as they start drying. Which I find really interesting. Kristen, you're awesome. Thank you for being our featured store. Hopefully more people... Uh, no, Anthea, it wouldn't really work on burlap. Wouldn't I? I, I just think it will soak through weird. Um, you could do it on a tighter weave. Yes, right now we are allowed to travel to Cozumel. Um, the the travel ban right now, according to the U.S. State Department, is for land, so that the borders are closed. Um, Cozumel is desperate for reopening, so we're gonna be wearing masks, and the hotel is. Um, uh, you know, we'll have new procedures. Everything will be done as safe as possible. So, yep, it works on, yeah, it works on everything. Pouring works on everything, except for maybe burlap. I mean, I try it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? You got cool colors on burlap. I don't know if you would get cells. Maybe if you used a ton. I don't know. You just have to, you'd have to see. I'm not really sure. Let me show you the chipboard shapes too, as they're they're still pretty wet, but they're starting to get that. the The heart is almost dry, actually. It's got a few spots. But look how cool the octopus looks. Oh, so good. Any last minute questions? Anybody want to tell a joke? Tell a story? Anybody? Anyone, Biolar? I'm just turning around and looking at all my pretty much. Yeah, you could, I think, I think doing a pour and then like spoonflower.com making a print on the fabric would be much easier than actually pouring on the fabric. So I sure appreciate you guys. Thanks for support. Thanks for all of you that have signed up for um, online classes, either the Facebook classes or the new regular class. Snog is a British word. I lived in England. Um, I lived in England when I from ages 12 to 15. And so snog just means kiss, make out. Um, yes, Laura, you'll have to go back and watch from the beginning. Yes, pouring medium is, is what you mix with the paint. You buy chipboard shapes right there at Ephemera Paducah. Just go back and watch it again, and um, it will save to the group. So please watch um, or rewatch any of them as well. 
was looking for my phone. I realized I'm broadcasting from my phone. <laughs> so yes, please, please go watch or go like Ephemera Paducah's page. Um, Kristen's just so easy to work with. Uh, speaking as a teacher, um, actually most of the stores that were not easy to work with, they're not around anymore. They didn't, they haven't survived, but Kristen is incredibly professional and on the ball. So definitely support Ephemera. Appreciate you all. You can, yeah, the abstract class is available. Abstract class is up and running. And, and so what's a little bit confusing is my live Facebook classes, they, they are they are like this, what you just watched. They're like this, but on Facebook. Um, the the new abstract class is a traditional, app, uh, traditional online class, meaning it's all hosted from my website. So two different beasts, really. So, but if you have questions, just email me. Cool beans. All right. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Uh. Kristen is amazing. She's awesome. Okay. Bye, everybody.